morning dear students welcome back after a long time today's class is for class 8 and we are going to be discussing the famous poem of water scott that is lock in where if you remember before christmas we had discussed this poem in detail poem in detail and i had given you a brief description about the young lord lock in where that is the knight giving you a recap so that you may have a full understanding of the poem let us get into the story first of all you must know that this uh, poem that is locking word is a ballad when you go to higher classes you will come to know about what a ballad is what is a ballad a ballad is nothing but a story in the form of a poem you write a story in the form of a poem in stanzas that becomes a ballad you write about an incident in the form of a poem that is a ballad and every country has several ballads for example in india heer ranja i think that was one of the famous films and this was nothing but a ballad converted into a film Now, this poem that is Lochinver talks about the young Lochinver who was a brave knight and his would-be wife, that is Ellen. What is the background of the story? Let me give you a recap so that you might be able to follow the poem. Though we have discussed this earlier, I am giving you a revision. Lochinver was a knight, and this knight. was a great knight he was not a coward who is a knight a knight is a decorated soldier appointed by a king in the medieval times when there was no modern army like the the army that we have now there were only soldiers who fought on horseback horse was a great animal or it was a kind of means that was used for battle so soldiers fought on horseback and the soldiers who sat on the horse had special clothes to wear they had an armor a breastplate which was covered okay which was made of steel they had shoes which were made of steel obviously they had a sword connected to their vest and their head was made of a i mean their head was covered with a, with an iron helmet and the knights were always at the service of the king the king appointed the knight and when the country was in danger when the country had to wage war against a neighboring country the knights played a very important role so a knight was a soldier of great reputation of great fame who safeguarded the interest of his nation and he was trusted by the king lakinbar was one such knight this knight was a brave knight but he fell in love with a girl and the name of the girl was ellen so Lockinger wanted to marry this girl that is Ellen. But the problem was that Ellen's father did not like Lockinger though he was brave. He was not against his proposing to Ellen. Now Lockinger comes to know that another girl has been arranged as a bride to the king. I mean uh, to Uh, 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 to Ellen, Ellen was about to marry another man. This news reaches Lockinver, and Lockinver came out of his house. His house was quite at a distance, and he had to cross a great distance in order to reach the house of Ellen. He had only one weapon with him that was his horse and his sword of course. Lockinver had his horse and he had a great sword to fight with. Other than these two objects, other than the horse and the sword, Lockinver had nothing to fight with. But his bravery 
was praiseworthy. He was a man whose bravery would beg a description. Now what happened? Lockinver sat on his horse and he was coming towards the house of Ellen. And to reach the house of Ellen was not a cakewalk. What do you mean by cakewalk? It was not something very easy. He had to cross a lot of barriers in order to reach the house of Ellen. There was a river. He had to cross the river. And the path was not so smooth. It was filled with bramble bushes, thistles, thorns, rocks, boulders, wild plants, and maybe some insects as well. He had to kind of face all these challenges and finally reach the house of Ellen. So Lockinver was focused. He took up a challenge. He wanted to reach the house of Ellen and take her, or in plain words, kidnap her and make her his wife. So he was a daring knight and his act was a daring act and a daring act leads you to success. Cowards die many times before their death. Shakespeare has very clearly said. Cowards die many times before their death. But the valiant never taste of death but once. Great people, brave people die only once in their life. But cowards, they die many times in their life. So a coward has two deaths. The death of his soul and the death of his body. So his soul dies before his body. He dies twice. Doubly died. As Walter Scott says, doubly died. He dies twice. But Lockinger was not that kind of a knight. He was a brave knight. He was ready to die for his love. So he rode on his horse, galloped, galloped, galloped. And on his way, he found several challenges which I've just mentioned. And he faced all the challenges. And finally, he reaches the house of Ellen. And to his surprise, there is a mood of celebration. People are there waiting for the wedding to be solemnized. There are knights, there are ladies, there is Ellen's father, there is Ellen's mother, and several other guests who had been invited. And within a short while, the marriage would take place. Wine was flowing. Food was displayed in great quantities. And there was laughter and merriment. Now it is at this sort of atmosphere or it is in such a kind of atmosphere that we see Lockinver entering with his horse. He galloped on his horse and he reached the palace of Ellen. You see, one thing we need to kind of understand from this poem is that you need to focus on what you are trying to achieve. Focus leads you to success. Nothing else but focus. If you are bent on achieving something, if you are committed to a cause, if your ambition and goal is clear, then success is not far away. Provided you take the right effort. Put the right effort. Not take the right effort. But put the right effort and it should be directed in the right way. So if your focus is clear, success is sure. Keep this in mind. If your focus is clear, your success is sure. So this locking with the brave knight who had a clear focus and a clear ambition in his mind reaches the palace of Ellen. And he sees everybody in a festive mood. And we begin with the third stanza. We have discussed the other two stanzas in the previous class. Then spoke the bride's father's hand on his sword. For the poor craven bridegroom said never a word. Oh, come ye in peace here, or come ye in war, or to dance at a bridal young lord of the Remember this. Remember this stanza. You can follow the stanza at home. Open your book. Look at the stanza. What does the stanza say? Then spoke the bride's father. Who was bride's father? Who was the bride's father? Obviously, Lockinger's 
father-in-law. His hand on his sword. Let's stole the bride's father, his hand on his sword. So Ellen's father, he placed his hand on his sword for the poor craven bridegroom said never a word. Who was the bridegroom? Bridegroom was Lockinger. And the bride was Ellen. For the poor craven bridegroom said never a word. He did not say anything. Lockinger's, I mean, Ellen's father, Ellen's father is looking at Lockinger. He has a very serious look. And his hand lies on the sword. But Lockinger never mentioned the word. Oh, come ye in peace here. Oh, come ye in what? He puts a straightforward question to Lockinver. And what is a straightforward question? Lockinver, tell me whether you are coming in peace or in war. Do you, have, do you have peace? Do you bring a message of peace? Or you have come here to fight with us. Or to dance at our bridal, young Lord Lockinver. Dance at our bridal. What is the meaning of the word bridal here? It is the marriage celebration. So, Ellen is going to be given in marriage to another man. And Ellen's father is asking Lockinwell, Are you come here to dance at the wedding party? Or are you come here in war? For which Lockinwell answers, You see, there are many girls here around, but my heart never went to any of them. My one and only focus is Ellen and marry her I will at any cost. We will discuss that in the next class. But for the time being, keep this in mind. Lockinwood is a romantic hero. And you know, he has one ambition in life and that is to marry Ellen. And he is ready to face any kind of barrier or any kind of challenge, or any kind of trouble, or any kind of problem in order to marry Ellen. So he reaches the Netherby Gate. What is, what is the meaning of the word Netherby Gate? Netherby Gate was the name of the palace where Ellen lived. So he reaches the Netherby Gate, and he makes a bold entry, and as soon as he enters, he sees there is a mood of celebration. Everybody is there dancing, enjoying the wine that was flowing and the marriage would happen within a few minutes. It was at that time Lockinwer makes an entry. And on seeing Lockinwer, his father, Ellen's father, on seeing Lockinwer, Ellen's father puts a question to him and the question is, have you come here in war or have you come here to celebrate the marriage of my daughter? For which Lockinwood is going to give a definite answer. And you know what the answer is? He says that there are hundreds of women here all around. But my only focus is on Ellen. And Ellen is going to be my bride. And marry her I will at any cost. So with this we wind up today's class. I'll give you one more recap. Remember Lockinwood was a great knight. He was daring. He was ready to face any challenge. His boldness is exemplary. And he loved Ellen from the bottom of his heart. And his only intention was to marry Ellen. And he was ready to sacrifice anything for her. Ellen was engaged to a coward. That is the unfortunate twist in the poem. Ellen's father was not pleased with her. With the lucky word. So Ellen's father had decided to give her in marriage to someone else and the marriage was fixed. Lockinwood comes to know about the marriage and he reaches the Netherby gate, challenges his father-in-law and finally Lockinwood carries Ellen on his horse. We will read the rest of the part or rest of the poem in the future classes and till then I want each and every one of you to read this poem because Walter Scott's poems are a bit difficult to understand because they are written in ancient or archaic English. Some of the words you might not be familiar with, find out the meaning for those words in the dictionary. So keeping all these points in the background, 
we will meet in another session and in that session I will describe as to what happened at Netherbegin and how Lockinver managed to marry his bride that is Ellen. Till then keep reading and stay safe at home. It's harsh winter. Be busy with your books and enjoy the time with books and with your entertainment. Bye.